Good morning, Prepper Nurse One here. Um, I wanted to do a video today, and I, the subject is basically how much gas do you have um, on hand in case of an emergency. And uh, you can see I got a few gas cans underneath here, and I have uh, another gas can here, another gas can there. There's a gas can there, another gas can there. Um, that's uh, kerosene. There's nothing in that one. Um, so anyway, I want to talk about how much gas that you have on hand in case of an emergency because I have over under here is my generator. Um, I have a 5,500 watt generator. Obviously this is a time of the year that that comes in quite handy up here in the northeast because of the cold weather. And uh, I'll show you the dent I'm already putting in this freaking wood. Uh, I've been burning, 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 so uh, I actually got to get back up to the property. I'm, but I've been waiting because of the obviously the weather's been bad. This weekend's supposed to get warmer, so I'm going to probably try to get up this weekend to get another load of wood. But let me get back to the subject at hand. Um, I normally keep 40 gallons of gas on hand at all times, okay? And the reason that I do that is because in a worst-case scenario situation, you can never have too much gas. You, um, in your vehicle, um, what I, my rule of thumb in my vehicle is I always have enough gas. Like if I get down to a half a tank, I get down to half a tank, I go to the gas station and I re refill. I never go below half a tank. Um, in an emergency situation, you're going to have what you have. If the, if the power goes out and, you know, without the power, you can't pump that gas at the gas station because everything runs on electricity. So you would be completely out of gas within a very short time. But by having backup gas on hand, I have enough gas to run the generator for quite a while with 40 gallons. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an, and again, it's another thing for peace of mind. So um, I kind of thought it was an important subject because it's, you know, everybody talks prepping and different things and you, different stuff you should have. And so um, gasoline is a huge, huge thing. Now, what I do personally, I rotate the gas every six months. So I reload in um, the fall, which is in September. And then in April, I use up all that gas and reload it as I go. And then in April. So... So twice a year, I mean, and I know that there's additives that you can put in to extend the life of the gas, but right now we're not in an emergency situation. So I just, I let the gas sit for six months. After six months, I use it and um, just re reload again. So if I, by doing it twice a year, so every April 1st, I, I'll start using that gas in my truck or in the motorcycle or, you know, in the um, lawnmower or whatever. And, uh, you know... Then as soon as one of the cans is empty, I'll go to the gas station and fill it. So over the course of the month of April, I'm obviously going to use more than 40 gallons of gas. And uh, so the gas gets replenished in April. Then when September comes again, I'll do the same thing over again. So this way the gas is always going to be somewhat fresh within the last six months. Okay. Um, now in an emergency situation, you know, you're going to be more sparing on the gas. So you're going to, you know, there are additives that you can go and buy to add to your gas to make it last longer. Um, you know, obviously you would do that at that point. But, uh, you know, in a worst case situation, you know, having gas on hand, I mean, it's everything that you do, every prep that you do, it's about peace of mind. And knowing that I have gas on hand, I feel safer and more comfortable now i'll show you these here too this is what i do too this is uh juice bottles and uh orange juice bottles and v8 bottles and i just uh after we use them i just rinse them out really well and put water in them and just set them aside it's just another way of uh having more water available in a worst case situation where if the grid went down and the power went down i have more water on hand Okay, every little bit helps. I mean, it's just, it's, and then I'll, you know, I'll show you uh, the water that I have here. We have uh, eight cases of water here, and, uh, you know, we keep that on hand at all times. So if it gets down, like once I use that case, I'll go to the store and I'll grab more. Um, I'll take you downstairs, and I'm going to show you, 
more of the water that I have. And again, I mean, in, in water is such a huge thing and a lot of people don't think about it. So, um, let me show you. Oh, let me turn this light on. Okay. So over here, I have two more cases of water. Underneath there, there's one back there and there's one right here. So there's two more cases of water. Then I have over here, there's a seven gallon water thing full. And then over here are four more and they're always full of water. So I, I keep a lot of water on hand as well because um, the rule of thumb according to the Red Cross is seven gallon or, or one gallon per person per day. So with you know the three of us living in the house and each one of these having seven gallons in it, you know, there are seven days, okay? So then you add these other two, and then, uh, you know, what I have with, um, in the garage, in the water bottles, and the water bottles here, and then the other containers full of water bottles, I have better than two weeks supply of water on hand for me and the kids. Now, in a worst case situation, are you going to be bathing as much? No. But you're going to need that water for cooking. You're going to need that water for cleaning. Not cleaning, but, uh, you know, for drinking. So, you know, you would, uh, you can make that, the amount of water that I have on hand last a lot longer. Um, so those are just a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. You know, it's it's always, you know, it's it never stops. Um, you know, even with working, you know, on the property and stuff like that, I still prep on a regular basis, and uh, that's important. So, um, so gasoline and water. I'm just showing you those things today, just to give you an idea of what I do. Um, you know, hopefully this helps. Maybe it gives you ideas of, you know, how to do it. I know that these blue containers, um, I picked these up at Walmart, and here's a cool thing. I'll show you with these. You take this off. You take, you can take that. Let me actually, I can show you how to do it like this. Watch. Then you take this here part, and then, well, actually, I don't have that. I'll actually, I'll grab one that's opened up already. Hold on a second, let me, just so I can show you guys this. All right. I'll use one of my ones over here because it's already open. So what you do is you pull that cap off, which is sealed, then you have your spigot, you turn it around, okay, and now when I set my water can on its side, I have water off and on like that. I don't have to worry about doling it out, so I'll take this over so you can see. So when I put that back on here, I can set that can on the side and then I can just use the spigot, which is actually really, really nice, very convenient. But I picked these up at, um, at Walmart, and I think they were about, oh God, I gotta say 12 or 13 bucks, something like that. But again, it's uh, seven gallons of water in each one. So I actually have a grand total of six. I have one that I keep at the property, and uh, I have the other five here at the house. So. Um, that's it for now, guys. Just sharing that information with you. I hope it helps. Um, I would recommend these. I like these, to be honest with you. Um, I use one at the property, you know, all during the summer, just having fresh water on hand, just so, you know, for cooking, washing up, or whatnot. Okay? So that's it for now. Prepper Nurse 1.